Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Skies, where we nearly died in multiple different ways. And, well, the jury's still out on whether, uh, whether we won't today. But, we have some port reports to turn in. Unfortunately, it's to the Ministry and not to those we would prefer to support. But afterwards, we are going to be pursuing the matter of finding the floating parliament. Which is what nearly got us killed. But, but, counterpoint, it's potentially profitable. Not perhaps as profitable as all this, but maybe. Maybe I will make enough from it. Maybe. So, to the ministries first. Hold on a moment. It says just south of the minister. I have one concern here. Budden Parliament lies to the south of London, but... Hmm. No. No, I was going to say... Does it just mean the southern half? Somewhere in here? But, uh... I have no reason to go with that. Perhaps... Well, hmm. Perhaps... Perhaps many things, but it's something we will worry about later. You... Wonderful people. Deliver our port reports to the genial auditor. Yes. Hmm. I'm so grateful to have their gratitude. Could go for a ministry stamp permit, though. That would be relatively useful. Unfortunately, you don't really have anything else I want. So, yeah. The genial auditor keeps an Alexandrian collection of forms, orders, and permits, and is happy to dispense them to good sorts. A damn good stamping. He rummages through his many drawer desk. Hmm, that's an E4-C. No use to us, or indeed anyone. Oh, here we are. Wait, no, that's a paraffin requisition form. Where the devil... Aha! Success. He retrieves a densely typed form, stamps it, and hands it over. Perhaps this is the one you'll need. Well... Good. At the very least, it's profitable within that, uh, oh, what is it? The Generous Princess's Salon. There we are. I want to say cafe, but no, it's a salon. And no, I don't particularly know the difference. I'm a professor. I'm not particularly cultured, just educated. Don't. Don't. Okay. Okay. I keep expecting them to burst out into worm things. And it's awful, and I hate it. I hate it. But, it's fine. It's all good. We're going to find this goddamned parliament. Eventually. And someday this scout will prove that it was worth the investment I put into it. Which admittedly is nothing, but hey. Actually, you know what? It's proving that it is worth nothing at this point. Could I follow the sound of bells to find the parliament? I'm just throwing ideas at the board, really, right now. Smog's found its way in, eh? Yeah, that's an unfortunate thing. Also, this, this does not look like London architecture. This looks downright... Empyrean, which has me kind of curious. I'm wondering if there's been any cross-pollination of the two cultures. Or if this was originally supposed to be like a co-op sort of thing. Sorry, what? Oh, good. Think we had something? We're just going to keep going. Not going to bother with it. It's not my problem right now. Also, I can't afford more terror, really, so. Yeah. Also, I don't have a way to deal with terror in Albion, do I? Not terror, rather. Nightmares. I have no way to deal with. Glory, 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 you say. Worrisome. Very, very worrisome. Well, the bat, well, the owl continues to be as helpful as ever. 
And I see we have found nothing. Nothing at all. But I mean, the Parliament has to be near London, yes? Like, you don't say South of London and then have it not be South of London. That would be madness. Unless it's very South of London. Hmm. We're pretty well into the mists. Send out the owl one more time. A successful expedition, something of value, okay. You have my attention. For now. Until it turns out that the owl is just leading me to nothing. I see salvage. Good. Hmm, I see. The thing is, I think that... Just keep going. Just keep going, just keep going. Don't bother with it. I want to go into that, but also I think that would cause terror. Uh, because I'm not an idiot. And, uh... Yeah, can't really afford that right now. Can't really. Although, is that the storm that speaks, though? Mmm... Possibly. Possibly, I just don't know. I just do not know. And as someone who does not know, I just have to proceed blindly forward. Ugh, they're not nearly enough. Ugh. See, I don't want to stop at the bit between. Because as I recall, I couldn't get a port report from it at all. So, why bother, as it were? Oh, you were valuable before. Yes, excellent. Ah, yes, I will take these corpses, please. Thank you. Okay, these are both bad, but... Pay our respects. That's all we can do for them. Silences coffins drift past the windows. A stoker removes his hat. And that was not bad in terms of terror reduction. I mean, there's worse out there, I guess. This probably is not helping. I suspect dragging coffins alongside the locomotive is not. Oh. Well, hello. Gonna have to go that way. But yes, I suspect it's frowned upon. Not really a approved of, uh, well, thing for my suspicious crew. Yeah. They probably don't like that. It's fine, though. It's all fine. Everything is certain fine. Um, I can't help but notice I'm still not finding a parliament. And it's, it's worrying me right now. It's worrying me more than a little bit. Because I should be finding it. And I'm not. Ah, dearie me. Okay. We will press on and hope for the best. But what else can we do? Hmm. This is a very large barrier, I see. This, in particular. Very large barrier that I'm gonna have to bypass. I probably could have gone around up top here, but, well, I had to map things out. I had to know. Without knowledge, there's only ignorance. And ignorance cannot guide you. Oh, oh, onward. Not all London's endeavors succeed, you say. A curious thing. I do have to wonder about that work world. Oh, what is this? I don't really want to know, but I do want to know. Hello. Oh no. Well. The deranged dreadnought is defeated. 
Oh, that's excellent. The deranged dreadnought's rapid aggression is stilled now. Your lights reveal glassy growths encasing sections of its ravaged hull. Where the battle has shattered them, they spill across the sky in a plume of shards and dust. The eerie contagion of glass that afflicts the dreadnought may yield valuable materials, if you can find a large enough slab, and, uh... Yeah, I think our chances are pretty good. Apparently not good enough. Oh no. The chambers of the Dreadnought have become an extended death trap. Slivers of glass fall from ceilings, vitrified walls shatter as you pass, exposing you to the sky in its wind-blown shards. You are, first, you are forced to turn back, with only a few larger fragments that might fetch some sovereigns at port. I see. I'm going to have to accept one more batch of nightmares, I think. I think that is really my only option at this point. If that event pops. Which it really better. And now I desperately need to get back to uh, the Reach because I need to deal with all these nightmares before they kill me. Good. I was hoping. I was hoping for this scenario. Hmm. Oh, this looks promising. <gasps> you near Parliament, which was transported brick by brick from beneath lovingly rebuilt in London in the sky, and then exiled here when it proved incapable of doing what it was bloody told. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to deal with you today. I'll be on Marauder. Actually, you know what? I am going to deal with you today. Well, it is late and you are alone. Doubts prey on you. I mean, I'm in the middle of combat, though. Is this a path you should have taken? You trespass upon the precincts of heaven. What price will be exacted of you? What prices have you already paid? Drink. Drink and forget what you've seen. The bottle sits on your desk. Its contents are dusky gold. And I need something to deal with my terror, so... When you wake, the bottle is empty and your memory is less complete. Someone's knocking at your cabin door. You're needed on the bridge. You take the necessary time to compose yourself. Better the crew not see. Alright, friend. Now, let's finish this dance. So I might speak with Parliament. Loot the hold, please. Ooh. Delightful. Some supplies. Oh, well. Murgatroyd's fungal crackers. A rare treat in the skies. Newer skyfarers tend to disdain them as revolting and abominations unto the Lord. The taste is not approved with age, but the vintage provides a certain smug satisfaction. Eh, curious that. But no, more to the point, we have a port to go to, and a wonder to explore. Eh. What's Parliament, you say? Ah. I see Queen Victoria might have made a dictatorship instead of the constitutional monarchy that she had previously. I see and understand. There we are. I see the finding docks does appear to deal with your terror quite effectively. Cromwell's Gate. The ancient palace drifts through the void, a monument to British democracy and the greatness it believes it brought to the high wilderness. An elderly guard watches with suspicion as you dock, relaxes at the sight of fellow Londoners. The Palace of High Minster. The Empress shipped the House of Parliament brick by brick from Old London to the High Wilderness to help her govern. It didn't take long for her to grow weary of the questioning of her authority and have it severed from London. Parliament now drifts free in this distant corner of the sky. It continues to pass laws, but hardly anyone pays attention. Well, that's worrisome. The Parliament Report report Parliament has seen better days. The last bulwark. While the palace is off-limits to most, there are always ministers and civil servants whose busy schedules allow a moment for a free drink. You ask the obvious question, what's the point of Parliament when Her Renewed Majesty never gives her assent to any of its proposed laws? 
They bristle. Tyrants fall. Democracy endures. Given time. Let's see here. A welcoming party. Let's see what this is about. Smiling, nervous young people greet you as you disembark. Excuse us, the man in the yellow rosette calls. Excuse me, a minute of your time. The smiling man wearing the yellow rosette cuts in first. Captain, join our campaign to celebrate Albion and restore old-school patriotism to the land by officially renaming Wednesday as Victoria's Day. Praise her renewed majesty for all she has. A sm the smiling woman wearing the green rosette effortlessly cuts in. For killing democracy, for our subjugation? No, Captain, we must make a stand for freedom. We must show the Empress that we will not just sit idle. Join us as we triumphantly rename her precious Victoria Sponge to the People's Cake. They look at you with a hungry expectancy. What a ridiculous waste of time. Politics and knavish tricks. You're advancing your parliamentary career. Oh dear. The two of them show no interest in following you. They continue looking for new arrivals, willing to take part in the process. Presumably ones who don't know full well that parliament hasn't been in a position to pass laws in years. Explore Traders Green, though. It was originally named for Cromwell. Someone clearly holds a grudge. Curious, curious, curious. The replanted gardens are a pleasant place to enjoy a walk, though the buildings are out of bounds to casual visitors. The Empress's Gate is particularly fortified by a heavy chain and a padlock too rusted to ever be unlocked. A few protesters are taking a break to picnic on the lawn, away from the guards. Braver or more foolhardy ones sit on the aisle's edge swinging their legs over the sky as they eat their sandwiches. It's near them that you spot the fellow in the suit, swaying uncertainly. His footsteps have taken him precariously close to the edge. Nobody seems to have noticed. Run over to the help. He looks like an MP, but even so... Oh? That's just curious. An election called. An election has been called on the Brabazon War Calls. What are you talking about? Huh. He sees you coming. Startled, he steps back and with a drunken cry is gone, over the edge, and soon little but a dot in the swirling clouds of the wilderness. A small army of civil servants soon swarms from the nearest gates, staring over the edge, agreeing what appalling timing and manners the fellow had, and already arguing over whether the most appropriate memorial would be a bronze plaque on a bench, or a new ficus somewhere within the parliamentary halls. Oh dear. A tap on your shoulder distracts you. A tall clerk flanked by two claymen. Excuse us, he glances you up and down. Yes, very suitable. A moment of your time. He sits at a huge mahogany desk in prestigious Downing Corridor. Your conversation doesn't distract him from writing notes in the margins of endless pieces of paperwork. He pauses his scribbling only to sip from a large cup of stone-cold tea, or to scratch his head with a pen's long silver nib. Discuss business. He looks down his nose at you with the grim expression of a headmaster, waiting for an excuse to break out his favorite birch rod. Excuse me? Hmm. Ah, the captain. A moment. Do take a seat. Tea? Ah, yes, I'll call for some tea. The loss of our dear minister for, he hesitates, covertly checking a file. The Brabazon work world, yes, is a tragedy. But we must move on. You seem just the sort I'm looking for. Lucid, breathing. Have you considered a career in politics? Yields of a hand. No, I do not care about history or affiliations. A bum in the chair will suffice. The Department of Albion Affairs would be a suitable starting point. If you're interested, I will set the wheels in motion. I mean... Sure. Why not? Observe the people's perpetual protest. A ragtag mob of protesters have set up camp on the lawn. No two want the same thing, but their cacophonous chanting is impressive. Parliament has little power, but at least there's a chance it might listen. There's more than protesters can expect at the throne of ours. The protesters raise their voices with a spirit of camaraderie and a united belief that words can still make the world a better place, with neither anger in their words nor violence in their demands. At three on the dot, the huge portcullis opens and the protesters are served tea, scones, and little cucumber sandwiches cut into triangles. A little recognition of the protesters' ongoing service to this most vital part of British democracy. Why not join the protest? You have opinions to get off your chest. You scream until hoarse, wave borrowed placards, and invent witty slogans that trip off the tongue and are quickly picked up by those around you. 
The world does not seem a notably better place as a result of all this protesting. Still, even a tiny ripple has the potential to become a tidal wave. You have marginally raised awareness of whatever your cause was. Maybe. I kind of like this. It's a horrifying place, frankly, if you think about it for even a moment. But I kind of like it. A little bit. I'm gonna sell these munitions. Gonna buy all this tea. Just all the tea I can afford. Excellent. The benefits of, bil of a bilious bylaw, you say? A recent bylaw pushed through by the Restorationists Committee has outlawed the drinking of tea in Parliament, on the grounds that it is an undemocratic and imperialist beverage. Port has been recommended instead. Hmm. The law will no doubt be overturned overturned soon, but for now it creates an opportunity, and my god, was that a pretty good opportunity, frankly. Oh, I'm sorry, was I able to buy more? I think I wasn't, but regardless, neat. Ah, uh, just nostalgia crockery, well. Oh well. Ooh, these have descriptions? I don't think I've been reading these. Ah, such a shame. Operating from a forgotten, cupboard-sized office, the once esteemed official known as Black Rod, now sells sandwiches from the parliamentary canteen. In addition, in order to raise funds, he can also be persuaded to part with exhibits from Parliament's extensive collection of crockery. Well, well, well. See, now I have a choice. I could go back to Brabazon work world, and perhaps should to gain myself a position of power. What little power the floating Parliament allows. And then there's this valuable thing which I probably should grab now and a wonder to explore, so maybe what we do is we curve around and go through here and then back up here. But this is a matter for the future. For now, thank you for your time, know the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below, use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.